Mm -hmm. All righty. So good evening, everyone. Much thanks for coming to our bi-weekly, used to be weekly, to our bi-weekly staff graduate seminar series. Um, this is our third present, present, yeah, I think our third or fourth present, um, presentations um, for the semester. And what we do it, for those of you who are coming for the first time, uh, we try to mix it up with different disciplines and also academic mixing up with, with practitioner and just um, you know showing the creativity through academic and also practitioner's work because both of them work hand in hand. We tend to forget them. So today, um, our guest Nadine Hall, conceptual artist, is going to show us how they work in hand, right? And how we can't forget the two. But before I move on to um, Nadine, I'm just going to quickly um, introduce Nadine. I'm sure you guys want to hear all about Nadine. I'm just going to grab up her bio right here. Have it here. <laughs> Have it here. All right. So Nadine Nat 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 Natalie Hall. My mm -hmm. name fake is Nadine, right? No one knows that though. So yeah. Nadine Natalie Hall was born in Kingston, Jamaica as a conceptual artist. She specializes in installation art, sculpture, and photography. So very multi talented as it relates to the arts or the visual arts. Um, functioning as a catalyst of social change, her artworks are multi-layered constructions, autobiographic in nature and imbued with symbols that are connected to the larger histories of the black diasporic experience. And we're gonna see that through the coconut drops today. Hall graduated from the University of Miami in May, it's, um, recently 2022, where she earned a Master's of Fine Arts in Sculpture. As an MFA, Master of Fine Arts candidate, Hall functioned as a teaching assistant in the sculpture department and as a research assistant in the Department of Art History. Her MFA was completed with her multidisciplinary solo exhibition, Reclamation and Remembering Awe to the Building Blocks of My Narrative, which incorporated culinary art, sculpture, photography, photography and installation art. So we see that Nadine is really big on food Right? <laughs> don't get, don't get, get, get us too hungry, Nadine. So in, in, in 2015, she completed a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Textiles and Fiber Arts from the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, yay, right here in Jamaica, Kingston. Um, she received awards from most of the outstanding students in the School of Visual Arts and most outstanding researcher for the class of 2015. Hall is an an artist in residence alumna of Diaspora Vibe Cultural Arts Incubator and the Fountainhead Residency in Miami, Florida. Her solo exhibitions are presented or were presented in 2019 at the National Library of Jamaica 40th Annual Lecture and in 2021 at the University of West of Miami Whitman Center for Social Justice Week. She has participated in group exhibitions at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts the Institute of Gender and Development Studies, right here at University of the West Indies, Mona, the National Gallery of Jamaica, the University of Miami, Wynwood Gallery, and the Bonnier Gallery in Miami, Florida. Hall's work, Hero Looms, or Hair Looms, Unchained 2020, is currently on show in the Kingston Bian Biennial in Kingston, Jamaica. Her artworks are collected by numerous private collectors in the US, and we will have to talk about her after um, for one of her artwork, Nadine. So I'll say no more there. I could go on and on and on. So I'll just turn it over to Nadine. And I'm excited to hear this presentation. Okay, thank you, Lisa. And I am um, very grateful for the opportunity to present this work um, that, I, that I gave birth to. <laughs> Took three years in the making for me to, to really um, come into into myself and um, for this new way of, of, of seeing and understanding and um, um, uh, designating value. And so uh, I, I got a three-year tuition scholarship at the University of Miami, very illustrious scholarship. I didn't um, know tuition uh, and I got a stipend, but it was great. But I entered into the system and um, a white institution. So there were encounters. There was another student, two of us in the sculpture department, one um, white male, 
and um, from American. And right off the bat, we were in this competition. No, I don't compete with people, people who know me. <laughs> I don't compete. And so there was this competition that was happening. And so there were numerous encounters of microaggressions, blatant racism, discrimination. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it was hard, but but I'm 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 a storyteller. I tell stories with all of my life, good, bad, and indifferent. And um, so everything that happened to me, I turned it into art, and I was able to talk about the stuff. And so I'm presenting to you the process. Let me share my screen of um, how the work evolved. how the work evolved. Um, are you seeing the screen? Um, yes, we are, Nadine, we are seeing. Okay, great, fantastic. So let me start the slideshow. Okay. And so we are talking about decoding the art of, uh, art of survival, coconut drops as a weapon of war. Uh, so this is very dear to me, coconut drops, because I used to sell it in at Excelsior High School for a couple of years from about um, second form to, to I graduated. Um, and it was a mode of survival for me. And the reason why I'm having this conversation with you now and I have this audience is because of coconut drops. Because coconut drops helped me, <clears throat> excuse me, to, to the escape uh, generational legacy where, of teenage pregnancy from my mother, my grandmother, um, an elder sister, and it was just this trend. And I was like, how can I break this cycle? And when I had to do it to hustle, to support myself, then I found this newfound understanding of entrepreneurship and independence and empowerment. I was earning my own money. So many never need to get a sugar daddy or a boyfriend. Because you know, the sugar daddy, the boyfriend, then the belly come. And so coconut drops is not the MFA. The coconut drops is what, um, what is what has afforded me to have this conversation with you today because it's kind of steered my pathway and gave me an alternate, uh, an alternate, um, alternative means, uh, based alternate means to what life had presented to me that I could do it, that I had the skills, albeit the stigmas were attached to it. So, um, my MFA work, Reclamation and Remembering, Ode to the Building Blocks of the Narrative, presented as a multidisciplinary installation, incorporates culinary arts, installation arts, sculpture, and it explores a narrative of resilience and ingenuity, diasporic memory, and the art of survival. Uh, created on the concept of a single fam simple family re recipe of making candies with sugar and coconuts and peanuts that my mother taught me, was in turn taught by her maternal grandmother, Abigail Bogle, and that's right, Bogle. Um, <laughs> we are descendants of Paul Bogle and the memories of spending time at my great grandmother's house as a child. Now she was one of the first persons in her rural community to live in a house made with concrete, um, concrete blocks. Uh, so that was very significant. This exhibition reimagines the concrete blocks that Abby Hill's house was constructed from and sculpts them into art objects made from my family recipe. The symbolic significance of these confectionery blocks as art objects and metaphor bears witness not only to my own narrative of survival, but also of my great grandmother whose character and life as a farmer inspired the concept of this exhibition. Within the broader discourses of reclamation and remembering, this installation pays homage to the woman. Let's go back. Go back. Go back. Sorry. Um, pays homage to the women who um, to the women who survived the Middle Passage, slavery, and colonialism. Women who, through absolute determination, ingenuity, and resilience lay the foundation, the building blocks of existence on which generations are able to build. And so, oh, oh no. Oh, no. I'm having technical issues. Okay, no problem, Nadine. All right. 
Okay. All right. So Are you okay? All right. Yeah, we're I'm back on. So this is my mother on the left. You can see the resemblance. Yes, we look exactly like her. And so this is my mother who taught me how to make the coconut jobs. And then to the right is her grandmother, um, Abigail Bogle. And so um, I used a lot, I got a lot of influences from this work because I get influence from paintings and um, other artists, other fields and um, literature, poetry. And so Alice Walker, I think her, her, um, her poem, uh, her, her piece, <laughs> um, In Search of Our Mother's Gardens was, was very important to this exploration that I, that I, that I went on. And so our mothers and grandmothers have more often than not anonymously handed on the creative spark, the seed of the flower they themselves never hoped to see, or like a seal letter they could not plainly read. And so this work was also not just about myself. I had to get past myself and to look at where I was coming from, my influences, and um, going back to my great grandmother and then the woman who preceded her. And so I'm gonna take you um, a little video and to show you the, <laughs> to show you the, the exhibition itself. And then we move it from there. Let's see. <clears throat> These are just coconut, water, sugar. And this is the entire layout of the gallery space. <clears throat> Sorry, I had an entire gallery space filled with installations, photography. These are the molds that I use to make the blocks. And this is another iteration of the blocks and these blocks bleed which was not planned i set them up they're on very white very clean pedestals to set up the work on the friday we had the exhibition open on the saturday and the monday i went back to the space the blocks were bleeding Those are um, the huskers that I made. And I wanted to get into a little bit of the, the violence that is associated with handling coconuts, getting the fruit. It must be engaged with violence. This is another iteration of the sugar in bricks and pavers. That's another installation. This was another installation. This one is called um, Building Blocks. And this is one of my favorites <laughs> because the blocks are like just laid as in um, their natural habitat on a construction site. And that inner circle is called the Ark of the Covenant. This installation is called Aunt Abby shrine and pyramid. Uh, this is an ode specifically for my great grandmother whose picture is above the, um, the work. 
and uh, wait, wait, wait. right and so that was the entire um mfa show but before that i i was in a place in a in a, in a place where you know, I needed to get past because I was getting critiqued for doing the, the spears and the crochet threads and the stuff, but I needed to get past that. And so I, I went to a thrift store and then I encountered some, um, I encountered the, the gilded stuff and the tchotchkes and the, and the figurines. And then it took me back to my great grandmother's house. And then it was there that I had a spiritual encounter and I was like, okay, I'm going to talk about her. And it's as if she started to guide me. And so this work was, was, um, was done out of that experience. And this is called Memories of My Great Grandmother. And this is another view of it. Uh, this one is like, these are altars that I set up with the blocks again paying homage to her house and as metaphor for her being the building block of, of my um, existence. And I also presented this work as a photography um, installation. Prior to, prior to coming into that, speaking about my ancestors and um, keeping it and not looking at whiteness and, 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 and the tyranny of whiteness, I I every I did everything that was happening. I brought it out in the work. I did invisible because I was I was suffering and I was being ripped and I was being torn and it was so public and it was it was as if I I was being haunted. I was a sport and I was like, oh my god, I've had a traumatic life. I did not expect to come to this place and to be to encounter this trauma and and white imagination. It is. It is, it is terrible. And so I, I did that exhibition uh, installation, which I did one version outdoors and then was modified for an indoor installation. And um, I did this poem, Invisible Because I Am Black, Invisible Because I Am Not Valuable, Invisible Because I Am A Woman, Invisible Because I Am An Immigrant, Invisible Because I Am Not Affluent, Invisible as I am violated, invisible as I bleed, invisible as I scream, invisible as I am silenced. Can you see us? If you can, then you can see me. And after that, I went on another set of explorations, again, living with white. And I, I this work critique the, the, the fallacies of white ideology and the, and the brokenness of it and, the, and you know, the, 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 how it is flawed, you know, because all of these components, this, this is the grandioseness of whiteness. But, um, and so I left that, and I, um, the second iteration of, of exploring my, my heritage. Uh, so my grandmother, the first work, Memories of My Great Grandmother, it really focused on her. But this body of work, Aunt Abby's Closet, Focus on her labor, what she did as a farmer, how she lived as a farmer. And um, the closet was symbolic of her, but inside the closet, I had um, my awards that I'd gotten because history said that she was not valuable as a farmer. History says that she, um, she has no value. She's, you know, all of the all of the derogatory things that history has allotted to black women and black feminine beings, and I'm like, no. But history says now that I have an MFA that I am valuable. But history can't do that because me come from her. I come from her. So if 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 she never have no value, that means say me not have no value. And history say right now say me have value. So so history needs to make up its mind what these ideologies. <laughs> The, the white ideology, they need to make up their mind, what am I doing? And it cannot be that I come from her and she has no value. And I said, no, I'm bringing her stuff in this space, in this white space, and I'm going to show her value. And so there's the, the, the oak steak and the mashet and the coconut that she used to, um, and the bread which she used to sell and coconut jobs which she used to make. And so from this critique came the work. From this review came the work. And I last summer, last year, I was like, what do I do? 
what do I do? One of the professors in the review said, um, she's Canadian. She is like, oh, if you wanted to confuse everybody, you did a you, you did a good job of doing that. Not knowing my culture, not knowing that these things are significant. This was not for her. This is about me and my ancestors and my people who survived. And so I took the time and I was able to, I was inspired by the spirit of my ancestors to make the blocks into with the coconut drops recipe. Now, this has never been done before. Men have never did before. There was a, I, I, I've never done this on that large scale. I, I had to formulate the portions. I had to be chemist. I had to be engineer. I had to, I had to be chef. I had to be photographer, uh, documenting as I go. And so I started collecting coconuts and I got these pine wood that people threw out. And this work also talks about value. All of these things are things that have been thrown away. These are um, discarded stuff that I'm re-ascribing value to. And so I made these de-huskers. I've got the coconut, I have the plants, everything. How do I harvest these coconuts? And so I made these de-huskers. This was the first one that I made. And I'm gonna show a little video how this works because I'm getting into the labor of it. I are saying, how does this come into being, Nadine? How coconut drops come in a war of fear? Because this work was inspired by my ancestors and you will, it will all come to show as the presentation goes on. And so this is how this is worked. Very dangerous because this is a sharp blade. And at one point of this, I got cut. The video too long, so I can't show all I. And so this is how this is, this is done. It's just a minute. I'm just gonna play this out so that you see. And these three implements were done in the first, like what, three weeks of the semester starting because I had my plan and I needed to execute. And this is a safer method of, um, and this is Diosco number two, Diosco number three. This is how this is. All uh, again, metal work. Went into the metal shop, made this. And this is how this functions. This was a safer method of, um, of uh, harvesting the fruit. This is me um, finding the, the, the good ones with the water in it. If there's no water, that means more than likely it's not good, so I wouldn't gather it. And so this work was very labor intensive, getting something, having an idea, and then getting having the idea, having the concept, and then working it in every way to, 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 to get this thing to materialize. All right, let's see. And this is, the process of, of using the, the third D husker. I just wanna give you an example of how much labor <laughs> that went into this work that, that, that you saw on the video for the exhibition. And this is me doing it alone. I did get help. I did get help from, 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 um, from a friend. But so it's harvest, gathering the coconuts. It's um, dehusking them, shelling them, cutting them, storing them, dicing them, cooking them. It, a lot of work, a lot of work. Plus I had to, plus I had to um, be, documenting, being the photographer, being the videographer, doing all of that work as well. 
who was critical to the survival of my ancestors. It was a source of resistance used to maintain their posterity. There's a distinct connection between food and memory and traditions handed down from generation envelops this connection, establishing a sense of community, belonging, and cultural identity. The coconut drops and the peanut cake recipe used to create this, the, the sculptures in my thesis exhibition is an extension of that food legacy. And so again, process, the dehusk coconuts, these were in the freezer, so they're still frostbite. Um, another part of the process you have to know, um, crack them and, 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 and clean them up, cut, dice them up. So after having all of that, everything was done and I was ready to make my molds and um, to use the equipment by the department. As a grad student, you have access to it. I got, I got this email. Please return your, your keys to the welding shop, gate and wood shops. So it's an X immediately, your access to all tools and equipment in sculpture is suspended. I told you that this was war and this was me. This the date on this is September 23rd. Please note, September 23rd, 2021. And I got another one. I'm reaching out in regards to your midterm and look at the date on this one, September 30. Your committee now comprised of da, 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 myself as cheer. Your, I am reaching out in regards to your midterm graduate candidacy, candidacy review. Your committee now comprised of, if the committee now comprised of, that means it was comprised of other people before. Because as a grad student, you get to choose your committee, you get to choose the day of your, your, your candidacy review, you get to be boss. I did that. And when I got this email saying that your committee now comprised of, it strips your dignity, it strips your humanity, it's, it, 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 it strips your value. And I'm showing these as evidences of the war that I went through. But when I got this email, I was like, I don't have access to the shop. I don't have access to the tools. And you and they set the date because I had planned to do my review in November. And as you can see, Friday, the 8th, 2 p.m., in order to coincide with already scheduled graduate reviews happening that day, please confirm at your earliest convenience. This is non-negotiable. This was non-negotiable. And let us know if you have any questions. We're looking forward to seeing your work and discussing your progress as you move towards your thesis. I was livid. And I was like, oh my God, these people don't want me to go through. And um, the spirit of God said, I'm not a religious person, but I connect to the spirit of my ancestors. And the spirit said to me, you have everything that you need to succeed. And my ancestors were with me. And I said, don't worry yourself. I want coconut, I want coconut black egg I use and kill them. <laughs> Figuratively. <laughs> and so I was still able. So because I was able, before I lost access to the, to the shop, I was able to do some stuff on the, on the, on the, on the, on the um, table saw before the blade was removed and all of these things, I was able to do that. And I asked an undergrad to come with me because she had access and let her do some of the work that I, that I didn't have access to, use the equipment. And then I was able to, when she did a cutting, I was able to do the assembly. So that was how I was able to make these two um, molds. I know I've never done woodwork before, although my father was a cabinet maker. And so I was surprised. I was doing stuff for this project that I never did before. But this is war. This is the art of war. And this is the art of survival. And so this block was demolded on the seventh. This is my first block. The concept worked. The first one that the first successful one, the other one that I did was not successful, but I saw that it had the consistency that I was looking for. And I said, okay, if I add more formula, then it should come out. And if I made the adjustments, it should come out fine. And exactly that was what happened. And so this was the first part that was of me just documenting, me demolding it, saying that, yes, we got it. And I knew that I had won at this instance. I knew that everything that was set up for me to fail was not going to work. And so this was what I presented 
along with a PowerPoint presentation for my candidacy review. This was the setup, images of my great grandmother on the wall, some other works that I did, and um, the coconuts again. This is and, the, and, and these recurring symbols. And this was the block. This is the block. This is the block that got me candidacy. Rest and believe, trust and believe, I got candidacy on the 8th of October, 2021. So they fast tracked my candidacy because I had more time now to, 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 to do exploration. And so this is a fitting poem that was um, given to me, that was referred to me by my beloved professor, Erica Moya James. It says, won't you celebrate with me what I have shaped into a kind of life. I had no model born in Babylon, both non-white and woman, what did I see to be except myself? I made it up here on this bridge between starshine and clay, my one hand holding tight, my other hand, come celebrate with me that every day something has tried to kill me and has failed. This is by Lucille Clifton, um, this wonderful poem that is so fitting for my journey, making these blocks that has never been done before, never been seen before. I had no template. Only thing I knew was the material itself that I had worked with from I was like 13, 14. I knew the consistency of it. That was the only thing I had. Did not know that if it would work, but it did because again, I was being guided by the spirit of my ancestors and they said, we have encountered their ancestors and we won. And so they guided me. <laughs> and so I started more explorations. I said, all right, so if I did this with the dark sugar, what would the granulated sugar do? And so this one on the right was my exploration with the granulated sugar. And then everything was sealed. I was like, okay, okay, we're good. Um, and so this, I started working from home. I got equipment to borrow because I was persona non grata within my department. I, 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 I used to teach undergrads and supervise them. I had no incidents, no accidents or anything on my watch. And I now had needed permission to use equipment. I now needed training. I now needed to ask permission. I had no keys or anything like that. So they strip your humanity, but this was war. And so I had a home studio. My landlord was gracious. I, we had a big property so I could spread out from the garage into spilling out into the yard. And so I had um, tools to borrow. This is my workstation, work studio, this is me. I had to buy my compressor, I had to buy my, my um, nailer. And with more explorations, a lot of work. Some of the blocks didn't come through because you, when you work with sugar, it's very fickle. You have to be um, precise with everything. You have to be consistent with the heat source. You have to be consistent with the water to, to sugar ratio, you have to be consistent with it. And if any one of those fall off, you're not gonna get it to work. And so sugar was by no means the only reason slavery began to grow and proliferate. It is spectacular though, from the viewpoint of a descendant of the enslaved brought because of its power, that the black journey to the Americas is founded on a human sense, the sense of food. Slavery began with food. And so strategically, I thought it was therefore imperative to begin emendations to the historical narrative of slavery with food, and more specifically, sugar. Reclamation and remembering all the building blocks of my narrative intentionally sublimates the power of sugar, using it to present counter narratives, new ideas, and ways of engaging with it. This installation inflicts new pathways to recovery, reconcil reconciliation, and reparations. And I'm reading, I should have um, explained that I'm reading excerpts from my thesis paper that I've um, inserted. And so with all of those explora uh, explorations and stuff, I was able to release my poster. So this is a poster that um, I designed with assistance from Isaiah Lindsay, another artist, and he works at the university. Brilliant, wonderful person also a part of this for advice with Rosie Garden Wallace. And so um, I did the picture, I took the picture, I did the lighting for the picture, I took the photograph, I did some of the editing, Isaiah did the font and we worked on it together. 
And it was just absolutely beautiful. And this is the stills. I'm showing you the stills for the exhibition. And so this work, this photograph, huge photograph, I wanted to also show, show in a different, uh, with a different medium. Uh, apart from the tactile, I wanted a two dimensional, but there's a thing that photograph, photographs, they speak and this, this pulls you in and you can see the little, little nuances with the light and, and the sugar and the luminosity of the sugar and, and um, the blocks and, and the cylindrical, it's, and it's, it's, it's organic and it's, it's, it's um, geometric and the, and the, and the textures and, yeah, so I wanted to speak a different language with this photograph to say, this is sugar and you have never seen it like this before. And this is about reimagination. This is about taking things of value. This is about taking things that we have been taught to be ashamed of and not embrace and make it, in, make it into new material, new um, conversations. This is the humble peanut cake and it's on a silver tray and elevated on a huge photograph as well. And so I not only want to bring my narrative, but the people who pedal that we pass along the street side and say, you know, Osla, you know, them not have no value, out them they waste them life. No, I see myself in all of these people and I take them with me because you don't know their stories. You don't know. You don't know. This is another installation, Aunt Abby Shrine and Pyramid. And this is another iteration of the sugar. I use um, uh, food coloring, granulated sugar, and did some custom coloring of myself. I was, I was, I was just in a mood and I was just designing and I was just doing. <laughs> I was, I was, I was, I was, I was, I was out there doing, doing the most of this. And so this is also sugar presented in a new form. Um, without the impulse to find new lands for which to expand the production of sugar among other interests, there might not have been a transatlantic slave trade. So a sugar bring we bring we us so sugar, sugar brought us here. So why not use it? Why not use it and um bring new, you know, to kind of, kind of transpose that that narrative and just destroy that narrative of slavery and defeat and use it as new material, use it as a new threshing ground for um, new uh, developments and, and ideas, etc. This is Queen Abbey, another sugar sculpture, another sugar sculpture. This is how this was set up on the left and this is a close up on the right other sugar sculpture incorporated with the egg basket and the banana leaf pedestal, sugar, sugar, sugar blocks right here and the original um, concrete blocks. And I'm bringing again, my grandmother and the hook stick. Cause if you go a bush, everybody know, if you go to the, the farmers know that they need to get this fruit of the trees. If you don't have something to get the fruit of the trees, you ain't gonna get it. And this again, in, inscribes value, um, building blocks. And so the space, this was how this was set up, Legacy and Redemption. The pedestal was like clean and nice. And then when we went back, it was bleeding. And one of my, one of my professors said, oh, this is blood. This is old blood. <laughs> and the blocks were just showing off. They were just bleeding. They were not melting, bleeding this dark, red syrup and she said new blood is red this is dark this is old blood as if the blood that my ancestor that our ancestors shed was just oozing out and they were crying out to say yes yes we did the work we did the work we won and so until the lion writes his own story the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter um again a proverb Proverbs brought to me by my great professor, um, Erica Maya James. I didn't want this representation. I didn't want that. You see whiteness all over this. This is not all we depict ourselves. I didn't want this 
Yes, Karawaka started a conversation, but it still had the imprint of whiteness. And like I said, when I did my explorations of living with white and invisible, oh, they were too happy. <laughs> they were too happy about it. And I said, no, why? Why? And I was like, oh, these are tokens. They leave their mark and they come back and they circle and they see it and they say, oh, that's our handiwork. I didn't want to celebrate. This is not about celebration. This is about servitude and subjugation. I did not want that imagery to be associated with my work. I was like, no, I'm not taking them with me. I'm taking my ancestors with me. I am erasing the voice of whiteness and white supremacy from my work and give credence to my ancestors because they overcame the savagery. They overcame and they won. I don't want this. This is the same as this. This is a postcard. This is the same as this. These are their depictions of us, even our children. This again, whose narrative is this? Whose? No dignity to us. And now we're like, oh my God, Louise Bennett, love her, icon, she did the work. But this representation, she had to do it because it was her only way in to appease the whiteness, to say, oh, we are not angry black women. Ah, da, 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 da. But she was strategic. But this, if you do this, the, the history of the bandana, it is not ours. Why would I ever use pitchy patchy? Why would I use pitchy patchy for our oh, one? Why this? This is not ours. This is, com this, this is from this. Mommy figure, she is exemplifying the mommy figure. That's why she was embraced. And, and, and as a minister, but it was a strategy of war also because she had to appease them to say, give us a foot in and look over how popped up on TV you now. But is it ours? The recurring um, stereotypes. Remember my, my living with white? And I have, these, I have these figurines. And look at this advertisement from way back. And the same figurines. And even the language, look at this. Temptilating chillons. And they, they, they. <laughs> All right, so let me move on. And so this is called Negro Arose on the left from the great Edna Manley. Men I know, men I do anatomy and them something there. And I, I'm not, a, I'm not, a, I'm not one of those. Um, yep. I'm not. But I think Negro Arose, we don't call ourselves Negroes. Barrington Watson made that point in his documentary. And I was like, oh, that's true. And he spoke about the fight that he got. And, and so, so Edna Manley was, was um, cloning us. She was trolling us from them time. And I put these two images beside each other because anatomically, them similar, them too similar. She did not troll her from them time day. Mama move on. This, what a dignity for people, them day. Put some clothes upon them. Them need some clothes. What a something here. Fetishization. What a something here. What is this? And them look up. And if we go back, looking up at the gaze, look up again, look up, looking up again, look on these figures, looking up. Uh, who them I look up to? Looking up, this lady is looking up. Listen, the, 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 the symbols are there, the signs are there. They've been trolling us. Our mothers and grandmothers, some of them moving to music, not yet written. And they waited, they waited for a day when the unknown thing that was in them would be made known. But guessed somehow in their darkness that on the day of their revelation, they would be long dead. On the day of their revelation, Alice Walker, in search of our mother's God, on the day, yeah, they would be long dead. But this is that day. But they knew that the revelation would come. And I have gotten that revelation. And I want this work to spark that the, 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 because we are such a great people and the young men, they take up the guns and the girl just go, oh, what am I gonna show to them? Because they have not been told that they are, they are great. They have not been told to find themselves and we discard them. The schools that are in the inner cities get the least attention, but those students, the look of boy, they might feel lack, lack, lack of them community with gun at night time. And the girls, are, 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 are being prostituted, they're being abused, 
and all of these things, and yet they get the least amount of resources. And then you say, nothing good can't come out of the ghetto. I lie to my tell. And me say, peanut cake and drop. See me here. A bull be I come from. And so this work, again, I'm bringing the people, the voiceless, the the, the peanut vendors, the, 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 the market vendors, the uncapped man, them, I'm bringing them with me because they have value. No one knows what they've been through and we judge. But like I said, I see myself in every single one of them because I am them. And so I did gilded mirror. This mirror again was thrown out, huge mirror, 39 inches wide. Um, and it had the text, bringing the gifts my ancestors gave. I am the hope. I'm the dream and the hope of the slave from Maya Angelou. And these are the, 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 the molds. I got 23 pieces of pine wood that I found along the roadside in my community. And these made seven molds. And we know the significance of the number of seven. I, I wanted to get eight, but the molds gave me seven exactly. And I didn't want to put them back as molds. And so I stacked them and they made an installation within the space called Reclaimed. My father was a cabinet maker and my father was a troubled man. And so making these molds um, took me back to my childhood, familiar smells, familiar <laughs> terminologies, but I was never taught woodwork. And so I was able to instinctively create these molds, create the patterns, did the cutting, put them together and um, kind of solved that unresolved that happened between my father and his life. Um, this is called coconut drops and the weapons of war because you have to engage the coconut with such violence. And I, I think it's metaphor for a larger conversation, but I haven't, I haven't figured it out as yet, but I'm, 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 it's in my head and it's, and it's, and it's going around saying, yeah, um, what about these coconuts? Um, superfood, but you, you have to engage it with such violence. And so the most important narrative I want this work to establish is a narrative of celebration, perseverance, and triumph. I want to use this work to dismantle the false claims of defeat and subjugation that history and art historical narratives have canonized regarding the story of my ancestors. Reclamation and remembering owe to the building blocks of my narrative, rewrites those claims and inscribes that theirs is a story of victory because they survived against the odds and left the blueprint, the building blocks of the narrative on which we are able to build. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and that's it. That's it. That's the work. That's the work. That's the presentation. <laughs> Lisa. Oh my God. Hello? Right, right, right. I'm here. So, so what I'm I, here. what I, what I want, what I want, I want this work to inspire. I want collaborators with this work because you know I have this work in in um in storage, but um uh, and I want this work to be seen in Jamaica. I want this work. It, this work has to be seen in Jamaica. It has to be, and it, I need it to go to the diaspora because it gives hope and it gives a sense of celebration and triumph. That this common street food that that you know that bears such a stigma can be put in in um in um high high art and 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 these spaces that would not even imagine you know 
Nadine, I'm going to go to the audience now. That was amazing. Sure. Your work was amazing. There's a lot of comments in the Thank you. Box. I'm sure there's also um, questions for you. I have a few. Hopefully, mm -hmm. I get to ask at least two. Okay. I found it was really, um, um, when we started off, we talked about this idea of the academic and the and the and creativity and now we're seeing the personal and how it all connects into this creativity i'm mm -hmm. just really um i'm going to take some questions um before i ask um my question uh is there anybody want to open their mic and then i and then keep your questions short because i have a lot of lots of comments in the comment box and this is unusual nadine and i'm very serious so mm -hmm. i have a lot of comments to go back to yes so, if you can make your questions or your comments very short, just to allow everyone to get a chance to speak uh, with Nadine, because Nadine did make this clear to me that she wanted this to be an interactive session. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, she made that clear, and we saw that through your presentation. So are there any questions before I go into the comment box? Yes, actually, this is Jacqueline Bishop. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, we can um, hear you, Jacqueline. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for this presentation, Nadine. It's it's powerful, it's moving, it's deeply evocative. I'm really glad to be here for it. Um, I wondered if you could talk a little bit about what transpired. Like, I feel like I'm missing the context of the, the battle that was going on between you and the University of Miami. Mm. And the... <clears throat> the what you showed us the emails and whatnot the texts and whatnot it it doesn't really give any context so i was trying to figure out what had happened there thank you okay thanks thanks um for your question jacqueline and thank thank thanks for joining um am i muted can you hear me yes we can hear you okay yes. okay great yes, yes. okay great 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 all right so it was it was like a three-year battle like i i don't know what ideas they had um but there were numerous things happening like the other grad student like i said there were two of us in the sculpture department and um the other grad student had a at a non-university of miami related exhibition and we were told that we're teaching assistant job comes first and they had booked that and then they said I should work in his space and I was like mm, I respectfully declined but um congratulations on your exhibition and I there was severe backlash for that because I should have worked his shift and I was like no and um there's another instance where one of my installations was cut down because they said it should come down by x time 12 um by the 7th of December 2020 and I was like when I went there at 4.20 4 p.m., the installation was cut down. And, and you know that a day ends at midnight. So I thought I had up to midnight. And they had it appraised and they said it's valued at eight to ten thousand dollars. And then said them I give me five hundred dollars. So these are multiple, multiple things. I was barred from doing sculpture four as a sculpture grad. I the professor said he's not having me in his class. So I couldn't get into all of the stuff because it's not about them. You know, well, although it's about the overcoming what I went through and finishing with a GPA of 3.944. So is yes. it that they just didn't understand your work or they were resistant to your work or what I can't I I it's it's one 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 of the professors said when you complain and you will complain often, they will think that you are the troublemaker. Ah, I see. So so what they will do, they diff, they did stuff. When I complained, <laughs> it was if, oh, you are difficult, you are this, you're, and I was like, no, I just need to do my work. I don't, I don't compete with people. Do you, let me do me. And so it was a lot of stuff. I was told that I wasn't um, graduate level, that I was just there to fill the, um, the, the, the quota, the, the diversity quota, oh, something dear. to that effect. Oh dear. So yeah, so those are the things that happened. But again, you know, I would, may I write the book? <laughs> So those are some of the things that I went through that I didn't what what the what the crescendo was when they definitely barred me and wanted to block my way from doing the work because I took the summer and got my concept and I was like ready to go. And they said, you don't have access to the tools, you don't have access to machinery, you have to now be trained, you have to get permission. 
you and and so that was what was happening and i was like oh no but like i said the spirit of my ancestors said you have everything go 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 and we're gonna use coconut and mash them down congrats congrats thank congrats, you yeah. thank you so it was real war so it's not even it's not even that, that's why I, I showed the the, the emails and say like, this was real something it's not made up so when we said coconut drops is a weapon of war <laughs> yes thanks Nadine and to think that food art is a uh, budging aesthetics in the art world yeah. And, you were, yeah, and you were able to use it in such a way that you brought out the social critique, because that's what school art does. And your critique of not just the, um, the you know, not, not, not just fighting back the administrators, but even just your critique on a whole in terms of, you know, capturing vendors and capturing people who are also, somebody mentioned in the, in the comment, you know, elevating these people, elevating. Yes. Right, yes. this ele yes. that elevation and use them blocks as that symbolic elevation. I'm going to read mm -hmm. some comments here, and I'm going to take some more questions. Um, Katrina mm -hmm. says, "Love the use of material." Um, Miriam Hines Smith, hello, Miriam. Very powerful. I like the of the blocks bleeding. Um, very poignant. And mm -hmm. Marty says, um, "Thinking now that Beverly Manley talked too about how mm -hmm. he felt coconut drops to attend Saint Jude's." Um, Jacqueline Bishop. Um, not my mom, Marjorie Bishop, but also again, going back to that idea yeah. of, of, of food, um, mm -hmm. very much a part of identity and yes. identity politics. And memory, and memory, because I, I did some inserts from, from, from Michael Twitty, who's just this brilliant, um, his food historian, he's so brilliant. And, um, uh, and he was able to put that dialogue together. And also the fact that we are here because of sugar and because of food, Mm -hmm. Because of food, we are here <laughs> in this hemisphere. And so when I when I was doing the research for my for my for my thesis paper, I was like, wow, I was so into it. And I, you know, thanks again for for, for having me. Um, Lisa. Much, much, much welcome. Um, are there any other comments um before I go through the other notes in the I'd like to make a comment? Hi Lisa. Hey, hey, go ahead, Donna. Um, I'm one of my camera as well. Let me see. Because I'm like, oh, it's a very hi, bad hi. camera. Hi, <laughs> hi, hi, Nadine. Uh, and, and I want to thank you for a very powerful and very inspiring presentation. Thank um, you. I really, I really think the way that you, uh, I said, elevated the ordinary, which most of us come from the ordinary, the base mm -hmm. of the society and the things that make us who we are and the way that you elevated all of those so that we could understand the kind of power dynamics that you're tackling. Mm -hmm. I found that the, um, the bleeding blocks were very important. And I wanted to ask a question because you use sugar and, and sugary things in some of your um, projects. Yeah. And I noticed that there were no ants anywhere. So, mm -hmm. a, so these air I'm in, in the back of my head, head I keep thinking these are very sanitized areas that you are transforming this way of thinking about ordinary Jamaicanness. Because in Jamaica, the place would have been full of ants, you see. Mm -hmm. So that kind of you know, again, crossing different borders and barriers comes across in the way that the project stands in this new space. Um, and did you think about that in the way that you were presenting the work? Because I, I mean it's very powerful and I'd really want to see it here in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. if there's a way you can even bring a part of it here so you can speak to it in mm -hmm. front of ordinary Jamaicans to see how revalued yes. aspects of self can be. You know, yes. Found items, very important. Yes. It's, very, it's a very moving exhibit. Very moving. Thank you. Thank so, you. So, so, so did you think about the kind of framework that is in and, you know, how it is representing this new space, even some of the challenges that are facing? I have a dog, so I have to close my mouth. <laughs> yes, it's okay. Thank, and congratulations again. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. All right. So the space, um, nothing like this has ever been done. I didn't know for research of me. I'm the first that use culinary arts to do my sculptures. Let's just say that. And um, but I had to think about it and I was like, oh, when I was touring them at home. What I did was they, they were on these racks and I sprayed the, 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 the insect repellent on, 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 the, on, the, on, the, on the legs. And then the ants would not get any access to go up on these four legs. And so what I did was um, I sprayed the parameter, the doors, 
of the space because that was the only entry place for the ants to come in. So I did that and I watched and they did not come in. And then I sprayed the bases around the, the work. But once I got the doors um, treated, we just have a can of spray, insect spray, and that was enough to keep them away. So when I posted the, the bleeding on, on Instagram, I was told that, oh, you need to get all the biodegradable material out of the space because, oh, the ants and stuff. I don't know, I was like, no, we're good. Because if, if, no, we know, say, we take all of the biodegradable stuff out of the place on my exhibition that I got shut in for take out of the space, and that couldn't work. So I said, no, love, this is not going anywhere. It is good. We have no insects in the space. I sprayed it, and we are good. And so Thank you, Nadine. In war, it could really be a real war and, and challenge. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Much thanks for your question, Garland. Thanks, Nadine. And um, I'm going to go into the chat box. And also, mm -hmm. too, Nadine, um, it's interesting that you said, you know, you were the first to do the food art. But yeah. mark my word, it's going to be done more times in that mm -hmm. same space because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of food ways by Heather Halfway. She uses the term food ways and it's yes. how writers use literary um, yes. food for nostalgic and also for homesickness and very much diasporic. So I was mm -hmm. thinking of food ways as you were doing that as well and how you were able to also take that same concept of food ways and transfer it into art. So that's mm -hmm. why I know very much because especially with the immigrant population being in the diaspora and how people you mentioned, you know, Caribbean people loving food mm -hmm. and how mm -hmm. this is a part of our expression, whether it's homesickness in, in, the, in the context of literature, but it's even in terms of happiness, you know, how we're so yes. with particular yes. movies yes. and so forth. So mark my word, they're going to be using it. <laughs> All right, let me yeah, go. And, to, oh, and ahead, also, go and also, and also, um, I served coconut drops on peanut cakes. To my guests in the gallery, to the audience, you came in, you you view the show, and you were eating. So it was a multi-sensory exhibition. So you're smelling it, and the place was so fragrant with it, and you're tasting it, and you're seeing it, and it was just a whole experience. Nice. I'm going to read some more. Uh, Marion mm -hmm. said, "He very relatable to my sorry, relatable. My grandma." sold drops in red and white candy in the standpipe market where they had the first water installed. Thank you, Miriam. Um, Benny Watson says, powerful. Um, Marjorie Bishop fascinated Miriam. I'm referring to Miriam's comment on her grandma selling the red and white candy. Mm. Marjorie says, the danger of the Huskers. Um, oh my God. Uh, again, um, um, Donna, Professor Donna Hope, yes, yeah, says beautiful poem, very fitting. And that, I found that was um, also very um, creative the way you were bringing in food and poem. <laughs> mm, yeah. <laughs> and food and poem and art. So that was really um, something else. Um, yeah. Are there any other questions or comments before I move on? Because I'm moving outside of the box now, the, the chat box. Are there any comments? And you, um... I actually have another question, but I'll. Go ahead. This is Jacqueline Bishop, but if somebody else wants to go. Uh, go ahead, um, Jacqueline. I don't see anybody else. Uh, um, I, I just wondered if, because I think of all these wonderful women in Jamaica, and even some men too, who have walked around selling these things um, uh, and how beautifully they have arranged them, if mm -hmm. they would ever be considered artists in their own rights, if it, if the work was not framed within the context of an MFA, dis, you know, um, thesis exhibition or something like that, um, I I want th this is what I find myself wondering about, and I also am wondering about the the. Um, Alice Walker's essay and the wonderful mm -hmm. poem and all of that, if there was a way to integrate them more within the work outside of them being part of the, the narrative. So those were my two things that I was wondering about. I okay. see Miriam has her hand up. Um, did you want to make a comment to that, Nadine, before we go to Miriam? Um, yeah. Uh, the, yes, there are artists, Jackie, Jackie because the, the context of the Alice Walker essay is that there are artists without knowing or considering themselves as yeah, artists. Yeah, so yeah. they are indeed artists. And 
but it's just for them to come to the knowledge that they are artists because my mother was an artist my great grandmother was an artist in just her way of being and how and how um they functioned as women and how them take the look a bit and make much that's an art within itself and well, so see, our, I think it's the other way around you know I think that they recognize their artistry it's not recognized in the society I mm, in terms of in terms of no I, I I know I think I think they don't recognize themselves recognize themselves as artists because they think that art within itself is something different it's painting or this or that or call, that we call an artist not just the way of being. And so that is that is my perspective on that in terms of them being artists, but not really knowing that what they're doing is art and artful. Mm. Okay. I'd like to hear the other people, what they have to say. Mm -hmm. Petrona here, and so Miriam. Hi. Hi, Nadine. Hey, Thank Mir. you for this. Hey. Hey, 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 I feel like I could hug you. This Zoom oh thing. Oh. <laughs> um, thank you for being um so vulnerable and sharing so much of your journey with us, Nadine. Thank you. Um and you know, to to set a, a context, but I, I also want to ask you um the the propel the the, the, the work and your approach to it. I, I want to know how much of it was the work moving you or you directing the work? How was that dialogue between yourself and the process? Yeah, mm -hmm. um, because I see that you've gone through several um, iterations of the concept of recognizing heirlooms and ancestry and tradition from the black perspective and um, how much of the work was pushing you and how much of it was you pushing the work? That's oh. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I think for me, I went, I, th I went into the program to, I went into the program to talk about my ancestors and I ended up finding myself. Um, I ended up finding myself and then they guided me and the, the steps. I, I'm trying to explain it as best as I can. <laughs> But um, I went in to say, oh, they were not just slaves. And they ended up saying, we know that we were not just slaves. We had this. We ruled this. I know we're giving a portion to you for you to take and make it and see and travel the road that we have been, that we have gone. That's why they're building blocks of the narrative. And so the work and the quest for this, this impulse inside that was just pulling me, I think, Mayor, I had the concept and I needed to give birth to it. That's all I can say. And I, I explored, I, I worked tirelessly and it, I was like, I have the vision, it has to come to pass. How do I, and then trial and error and, and, and just going with this unction and it, it, it unveiled as you saw it. So it was like a, a call and response, eh? Call and response. Uh, <laughs> That's right. Thanks. Thanks, That's Miriam. Right. Petrona, I see your hand is up and then I'll go back to the chat. Okay. Um, I the work is extremely powerful, Nadine. Thank you Thank so you. much. The work, Thank you. you. Know, I'm just so excited and happy that we're able to see and hear the process. And it's so yes. so unusual for artists to be so articulate about process. Wow. And I think this is really important work, absolutely profound. Thank I'm you. interested in what the response was from mm -hmm. the people in these in, in this in particular institution. Um, we we know from the reviews and so on that the, it was recognized that this was a you know, very strong work. But what was mm -hmm. their response? All these people that you had to be dealing with over the three years. Um, they they were excited for the work. They um they came to the show, they took pictures, they posted it on their Instagram, they told people that they need to see this work. And um, but yeah, so at the end of the day, they 
what what they had this work was above them <laughs> so, so <laughs> the work was above them like honestly and 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 you know it's it, yeah so they did the congratulations and stuff and um yeah pretty much they em embraced it you know yeah. I, I I think I agree so much with somebody else who commented that we need to have that discussion here. And that would be very important for you to be able to show the work here and to start that dialogue. I need that. partnership, Petrona. I need partnership. Come partner with me. You all have all of the connections. I don't know what the people there, I don't know the consul general there, I don't know what Bob Z. I don't know what the people there. Man need help for bring the work at Jamaica. We say peanut cake and drops, don't it? <laughs> Absolutely. No, that work has to come. It has, it to, has come. to come. It has to go. And then also for the diaspora, even the people in Miami need to see it because the work is still in Miami. And mm -hmm. there are lots of people in Florida, especially, who need to see this work from the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I need partnership. I need help. I need people to come on board with me. And I need writers to come. Does this work inspire you? Because I'm inspired by writers and poets and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, will uh, is there a, an installation or part of the work that will inspire a piece, a writing, an essay? Mm -hmm. my, my, oh, no, don't bad mind me. Oh, <laughs> giant hit me. Sorry for that. I mean, what may I say is that people will see the work and see how brilliant it is and then pull them on and stand aside. This is not the time for it. People are depending on this work, to see this work, to elevate themselves, to be inspired. What mm -hmm. if I take this work downtown and set it up and tell the people and say, mm -hmm. and that make that. Do you know how inspiring that would be to young people and, 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 and students to, to reimagine things that they see every day just discarded? And like, what can they make with this? What can they do? So I'm asking for collaborators with this work, to push this work with writers and poets and, and write an essay about it. You, uh, use this work as raw material for your next project. Use this work as raw material. Like how we use the coconut drops as raw material. Use it as raw material. Talk about, you know, the, the, it's, it's historically rich, this work. It is. It is, it is. So, it is. So, and, and I also think the way it also subverts some of the, the ways we frame the narratives and the, yes. ways, the way I've been accepted in terms of the artwork. Mm -hmm. art. mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But so thank I've, you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. And don't worry, there are those of us who want to be your collaborators. <laughs> um, you might think we have, uh, you might have a, a, a rather unrealistic <laughs> idea of our <laughs> influence, but we are there. We are there. No man, but make some calls, send some emails, make some calls, send some emails. If you can't do it, you know somebody who can do it. That's all I'm asking for, because yeah. as a female, I don't know, come from the grassroots and so, you know, it's 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 a little bit challenging, but we mm -hmm. can come together as a community. I don't want this to be my something and so I want it because a revolution. Mm -hmm. Let the young people them lift up themselves and see themselves differently. And people who are in the doldrums or so-called doldrums and in the wayside to say, okay, my can do this, I'm a can do that, I'm a can see myself differently. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is not just about me. It's about mm -hmm. it's about a movement of a people and going into this, you know, creating this paradigm shift. Thanks, Nadine. Thanks for, Thank you. for your Thank comments. You. And I'm going to go back to the box, but before I go back, most of the comments, Nadine, were speaking to the subversion of mm. your, your um, presentation and how it's subversive. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to ask a quick question before I go to the box in terms of subversion, because you talked about Kara Walker. And I know Carl Walker is well known for this subversiveness and even the way she re, um, reproduces the stereotypes that you were just speaking about, the mammy, mm. um, the black faces, and um, she's well known for that. And even in terms of the whiteness that you talk about, because she does that also within a subversive way. So I was just very curious how that was received because Carl Walker is this well-known installationist, artist, and so forth. And she's doing first that same subversion. So um, how was that received? Or was it, it was it an issue? Did it come up? Uh, my, 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 my way was just to 
use the tactic of erasure that has been used against black folk forever. Okay. Um, somebody needs to mute. Go ahead. I'm going to mute them. Just go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Um, so my my because I am Titus Kafar again with 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 Erica Maya James Professor James her her artistry classes and um like Robert Coscott how he used that subversion as well uh, but I didn't want to do the mimicry of the stereotype I wanted to erase the stereotype total and completely because those stereotypes originated from white ideology and white imagination. So I'm like, no, we are not, I'm not having them in my conversation. This is about my ancestors and about my ancestors only and how they overcame. So I made it about them. I didn't want any trace of whiteness whatsoever within more than the white pedestal that the, the, the dingy blocks were put on because they were talking about value now. I know they, they uh, um, um, these gallery spaces and museum spaces um, distribute value. And so I was like, okay, no may I bring all of my people in all of the, all of the accoutrements and all of these forms in our gallery space, so yeah, value. Because I'll say one city in other space are value. So then valuable, that was it. <laughs> much, much thanks, Nadine. I really like that comment because again, subversion doesn't necessarily mean reproducing the same image, images. And you just really spoke to that because you, instead of using Kara's images, mm. you were able to say, you know what? And that is what is really the process of decolonizing where we can actually produce from the raw material and not yes. using the same material that is used to, right? Yes. The technology that yes. you're talking about yes. that getting with your white supremacy. So I'm, yes. I'm sure Kara and Kara Walker's fan would, um, would agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, no, white people them too love car work. If you, in time them love yeah. them too love your work so much. Mm, you're, from, mm, yeah. you're probably okay. a bit to the to the wrong drum. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um Javante, Javante says um he felt like you took us to crunch or church, excuse me. Um you are an incredible storyteller and as someone who had to watch you go through that department yeah. of warfare, I'm so yeah. blown away by your artistry and historical sensitivity. I wanted to know if you could talk some more about connection between her heirlooms and mm -hmm. the final year project. Would you situate them as being in conversation as a series or are they only coincidentally related? No, they're in conversation. They're in conversation. Um, as much as heirlooms, um, all of them, because they all denote value, the under, under, undertone of the work. Our, our overtone of the work. It's about value. And um, yeah, so the heirlooms work that is in the gallery now, um, plus the heirlooms that I did, heirlooms 2015, plus the heirlooms two cycles of genocide, they all, they're, they're, they're put, put, be put in the same space and they have a conversation with each, with, with, with each other. Um, because they, the heirlooms genocide is because these these um, men in society are discarded and they they, they now have these self-destructive tendencies. But if they knew that they were artisans and they were artists and their value, then they would react differently. They would have a different pers different perspectives and they would have a different self-value, self-worth. And so that is in tandem with the work. And um here in 2015 was when I celebrated my mother as my first source of artistic influence. And again, from just being a humble dressmaker, elevating her skills as a dressmaker to fine art and doing textile design and, 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 and textile sculptures, fiber sculptures, that is also in conversation with the work. And here looms, um, here looms that are unchained at the gallery you know, it talks about this liberation from these burdens that we have had to carry that we, you know, so all of the words, they are all in conversation, even the photographic works <laughs> as well. Uh, because when I do work as well, I, 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 I embody myself as an anthropologist or I embody my work as like, when people are writing about me in the future, they will see the threads and they will see the connections in my work. So that is how I 
kind of grab onto things and then say, okay, when people are looking at this, because the art historians, they can see the science. The anthropologists, they can see the signs and the symbols in the work. Um, but um, what, what happened at um, the Biennale, a seven-year-old came up to me and she said, I know what the work is about. And I said, tell me. And she said, it's about a lady and she was in the chains and now she's free. And that was it. And in essence, that's, that's the work. Cause she read the bag, she read the chains, she saw the empty chair, and she could put it together that it was a lady and she was in chains, but now she's free, she's no longer there. And I was like, oh my God, if a seven year old can interpret the word, I was like, okay, I'm on the right path. I'm doing, I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Much thanks, Nadine. And we're coming to an end. And mm -hmm. Nadine, I wanna be a troublemaker at the end. <laughs> I wanna no? cause some trouble. I know um, throughout the, the presentation, um, there was that the significance of sugar yeah. and, and also the connection to enslavement. However, I'm mm. just thinking, when I think of sugar and black people, I think of diabetes. So <laughs> how are we going to get around? Because if, if you were able to really speak to it within a creative, artistic yes. way. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm trying to bring out this. Um, I mentioned that. I mentioned it in, in, in my oh, thesis okay. paper. Like okay. up to this point, I had a very, a very um, tepid relationship with, with sugar because my mom passed from diabetes, complications with diabetes and a whole string of her okay. aunts and cousins um, died from, from complications from diabetes. And so my take on it, oh, there's a whole other sugar economy and stuff that I'm, that I'm getting into. Like, um, uh, I, I, I'm from from Senator Cory Booker, who who says that um yeah uh, that that sugar sugar stuff are subsidized, but you don't the farmers don't get up and subsidize and thing, and then the sickness and the stuff that goes with sugar, so it's a whole sugar economy. It's a whole big pool that I want to dive into with a PhD. Amen. <laughs> but um but but that's why I'm using it as fine art and not as so much as 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 food because it still has a purpose but if if it's so dangerous to our health you know um why not use it for something else and so this is my this is my solution to it we don't have to throw it all out we have it let's make it into something else much thanks and come on over for your PhD. <laughs> come over. <laughs> we need people like you. Come on over. Yes, I'm, 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 I'm ambitious. I want to do my PhD, but I check out one place on the GRE. GRE is no joke. GRE box, man, in my face. <laughs> I did a test. I did a test like four or six sample questions. I'm gonna feel four of them. All of them. I was like, that's why you need to come on over. You don't need a GRE. I don't need. <laughs> so come on over. All right. So All right. I, I I might take you upon that offer. Like seriously, seriously. So wanna guys, get, wanna get full scholarship? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know all those big people that you're talking about. So don't put me on the spot. And I don't know those people. I'm just Lisa. All right, guys. So um, much, much thanks for the, um, you know, your participants, um, you know, Bree and your preparation. Because I know you've been preparing, even though you had your thesis, um, you were still preparing notes and you would contact and still doing that you're doing that and, and so forth. So I'm very grateful for that. And also, thank you very much for the audience who came by and, and listened in and asked a question and um, comments. I also appreciated that very much. And I'll, one of the things I always like to see is when art meets academy, the ac academy and the academy meets art because of both yes. of them, they can work together. And I think it's through both the work of both, we're able to really have these artistic merits within even in Jamaica, the diaspora, like this is what makes us who we are. And we mm -hmm. take it for granted too much. We separate the two. And because we separate the two, we make them inaccessible. So mm -hmm. Nadine, today you have really brought the two together and made it very accessible. So I thank you mm -hmm. very much. And I do, I, I'm sending positive vibration that, that you will be able to come to do a show because I would be yes. 
your show with Jamaica yes. as well. So all the big wins were listening uh, in the audience. Um, here you are, right? Oh. Just contact us at the ICS and I can give you her um, Medellin Hall's information. I really want to leave it. I'm, I'm sorry, Lisa, I'm to give trouble now as you're about to wrap up. Okay, go ahead. Art meets academic. Can you explain that for me? I said art meets academic, academic meets art because the way she was able to do. No, I think I, I actually think we should sleep on that narrative and bond on that narrative. Art meets I academic. Don't know where academic we don't get the idea that art is not academic. I no, no, no. I didn't say it wasn't it. art. I didn't say it wasn't academic. If you listen to, if you heard what I said, Colleen, I said too often time we we try to separate the two. Mm -hmm. and there's no need to separate the two because of the way they work together because they need each other. I'm not separated. I'm just making a statement that too often time we do not see the correlation. We don't see how the both are married together and how they are used to explore identity. So I won't I say that it. I'm but satisfied with your explanation. No, but I appreciate it. No and problem. I like that conversation at some other point. And no Congrats, problem. Nadine. Thanks, Colleen. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for always the inviting Melissa. Have a good evening, all. Yes, no problem. And thanks all for coming in, Colleen. And I see a lot of your art friends and art people here again. Um, thanks for having everybody here. Miriam, I see you. Oh, she's gone, disappeared. Yeah, and thanks, thanks for all the comments. Um, I couldn't, I, I wanna I wanna respond to everybody, but I'm just saying I see you and thank you so much for all the comments. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Lisa. Thanks, Adine. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Lisa, you stopped the recording. Oh no, I haven't. Let me stop it right now. Yes. Before we start behaving badly, we get caught. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>